Welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm your host, Ellen Barrett, and we have a great show ahead for you today, but we're starting off talking about upcoming elections and what you need to know if you do want to vote. And so I'm joined by Molly McGrath, and she is with Vote Riders. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. And you are the campaign coordinator. Yes. Wonderful. So I'm sure that entails a lot of different responsibilities and a lot of different knowledge that you can kind of bring viewers today. So I'm excited to hear some more. Absolutely. We're a nonprofit. So like any nonprofit, you get to do a lot of, of tasks. So awesome. that's the great part of the job too. Tell us a little bit about more about your organization. Well, my organization, Vote Riders, is really focused on mm -hmm. all of these new voter ID laws, mm -hmm. focused on what IDs, the, what photo IDs folks need when they go and vote and mm -hmm. making sure that everybody knows what ID they need and that everybody has the ID they need. Right. Very important part of the process. It is, and especially since these laws are new. Right. And if you don't have it, then you can't, right? Well, if you don't have it, you can still vote provisionally, and then you have until the Friday after the election to get that ID and take it to the clerk's office or email it to the clerk's office and have your ballot counted. So there is that option as well. But I'm sure at that point, it's such a short time period that it's difficult to kind of figure it out and rush at that last minute. You're right, and that's why now in June and July, this is really the crucial time to mm -hmm. start talking about getting that ID and getting registered so you're ready for August and you're ready for November. So what do people need to know? What do they need to vote? Well, they need to be registered. Mm -hmm. And for that, I like to say registration is the R's. So <laughs> registration is with residents, and that's mm -hmm. proving where you live. Mm -hmm. So that's where you live in Madison, where you live in Dane County, something like your driver's license, if it has your current address, or a bill. It's the only time that bills are good. <laughs> <laughs> right? So you can use you know, your MG&E bill, your cell phone bill, and that is for registration, proving your residence. And then you need the photo ID, mm -hmm. and that's something that most voters do have. They okay. have that Wisconsin driver's license, that Wisconsin state ID. It needs to be from Wisconsin. And they have that, and they can use that to go and vote. And if they don't have it, that's okay. We actually, the organization I work for, we open up a case for every voter who doesn't have an ID. Give us a call. We'll help you out. We'll figure out what, what you need. If you need a state ID, a driver's license, what you have, if you need a social security card, birth certificate, wow. we'll take care of all of that. So, so a lot of different forms you can use? Well, you can use, you can, you can use that Wisconsin state ID, that okay. Wisconsin driver's license. You can also use a passport, uh, tribal ID, veterans affairs card, stu student IDs are compliant in certain circumstances oh, as well. So. Good. Some different options there then Yes, too. absolutely. So what should people do if they don't have one of those forms? Well, if they don't have a form, I would say get, turn off the TV and call me right now. <laughs> <laughs> do it right now. Um, and then the, there's a hotline, leave a message, 608-729-7720. And give me a call and we'll figure out what, what you need and how to get there. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to you know, look things up. If you don't want to, we can, we can do all those things. It's really a full service voter ID shop. That's so nice. And it sounds like, too, you guys even help figure out transportation to the DMV, even if that's an issue. Exactly. You know, it's really interesting. And what's mm -hmm. happening here in Dane County is really unique and yeah. one of the only things I've seen any place in the country. But there's actually free union cab rides to any voter to and from the DMV to get that ID. And this is sponsored by the county clerk, the Dane County clerk, Scott McDonald, and Union Cab gave us a generous discount. So call that number. And if, if you're out someplace in Dane County, rural, someplace in the city, and not sure where the DMV is or how to get there, give me a call. We'll make sure you have everything you need. We'll make sure you get in that cab. And we'll make sure that you have one successful trip to the DMV and that you, know, you leave with that receipt and get that ID mailed to you. That is so awesome and yeah. so helpful for um, a lot of viewers, you know, who maybe that is the barrier and then it's not worth trying to figure it out at that point. Absolutely. So that's why in, in Dane County, there's really no excuse <laughs> to, to not go and vote. Right, right, exactly. And so what if somebody is watching and they have their ID and they're ready and excited to vote, but they want to, you know, join in on the, the mission and help other people? Absolutely. You know, I am in the field every day talking to voters at churches, at mm -hmm. food pantries, at schools. And a lot of voters still don't know about this law, and it's new. This mm -hmm. is the first year statewide it's been implemented. So we need everybody talking about this because it can also be intimidating. Mm -hmm. But the more we're all talking about it and familiar with it, the easier it is for everybody. So have, have those folks, if you want to get involved, give me a call. We can talk about doing presentations at your church, doing some tabling, doing some outreach. There's an incredible group of volunteers in Madison, the Dane County Voter ID Coalition. 
and they're organizing and we're doing things all over the county every day. So there's lots of opportunities to get involved. Awesome. Wonderful. Thank you for being here today, Thank Molly. You. I appreciate it. This Thank is you. Molly with Vote Riders. Talk of the Town will be back right after this. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. If you love music, you'll want to stay tuned for this segment because I'm joined now by Guy Hankel from the Madison Public Library, and he's going to talk to us about the Yahara Music Library. Guy, welcome. Thanks for having me. Good to have you with us today. Thanks. So talk to us a little bit about what is the Yahara Music Library? Um, it's a project we started through Madison Public Library about two years ago. It's an online collection of albums made by local area musicians that South Central Library card holders can stream or download for free. And the library pays musicians a licensing fee to include the music in the collection for a period of five years with an option to renew at the end of that term. So you, you can kind of think of it as an online discovery tool for local music. That is really cool. So this is all local musicians. That's right. Um, local area musicians or musicians that have, have had a strong tie to Madison in the past. Wow, what a fantastic idea. So why did the library decide to do this? Well, we wanted to find a way to uh, showcase and promote local artists, um, at the same time begin to create an archive of local music. Um, we also wanted to find a way to, for the library to share uh, new releases that aren't available on CD. This is one way to do that. Um, but more importantly, we wanted to encourage library users to become active fans, getting them to go to a show or buy an album or other merchandise from some of our participating artists. That's fantastic, and I think it's really cool that you're focusing on these local bands because local music is such an important part of the, the culture and the community of, uh, or the culture of a community, I should mm -hmm. say. Particularly Madison, and it has been for a long time. Yeah, that's a vibrant part of the community, so yeah. I think that's fantastic that you guys are promoting it. So let's, let's, uh, let's get to the chase here. How do we use it? Well, you can find the collection at yaharamusic.org. That's the URL for the website. We also link out to it on our uh, Madison Public Library homepage. Um, you can, you'll see um, uh, a collection of album cover art once you get to that page. Uh, it's a, an easy to navigate interface with a music player that scales well to mobile devices in case you're using it on your phone or whatever. Um, clicking on an artist's name brings up a page with biographical info, uh, a video, uh, links to upcoming shows, links out to their social media and websites. Uh, clicking on an album title brings up a track listing and a review. And you can click on individual tracks to listen to the streams, or you can choose one of four different digital options to download the entire album. Um, currently, you'll be prompted to enter your library card number to listen to the streams or download the music, but very soon we hope to open up the streaming aspect to anyone visiting the site, not just library card holders. So when you say download the music, I mean, do mm -hmm. we, uh, the, the user, do they get to keep that music then? Yes. Okay, uh, so this isn't like a bar or a digital lending service. No then. DRM attached. You get to keep the music for free. That's awesome. Yeah, and that keep it forever. Very, very cool. Yeah. So. Now, who does the library work with on this project? What are some of the, the folks that you work with? Yeah, we initially partnered with Murphy, a local company that's in the business of digitizing music collections. Mm -hmm. And they worked with us to build the um, platform and the tech behind it. And the end product turned out so well that Murphy spun off a new company called Rabble, which is now in the business of creating software platforms for other public libraries that want to replicate local online music collections such as this. So we continue to work with Rabble on upgrades, improvements, and hosting for the site. We have a lot of up-and-coming bands here in Madison, as you know, and I'm just curious to know how you choose the music that goes on the Yahara Music Library. Well, we tried to collect as much uh, locally popular or award-winning or critically acclaimed music as we could for the collection mm -hmm. across a, as many genres as we could. Yep. Country, sure. pop, punk, reggae, jazz, rap, you name it. Sure. Um, going forward, uh, we will likely have public uh, s calls for submissions to the collection, and we've put together a small advisory group made up of veteran members from Madison's music community to help us guide that selection process. 
That's very cool. And so you're always, it's, it looks like you're looking to expand at some point in the future, or you're continually expanding the library. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll continue to add new music, uh, both old and new music, to mm -hmm. the collection. Um, but at the same time, we have a longer range goal of adding interviews, stories, photos, other ephemera to create kind of a deeper, more encompassing archive of Madison music history. What a cool idea. So you go to yaharamusic.org and that'll get you started. Exactly. Excellent. Guy yeah. Hankel from Madison Public Library, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Don't go away. There's more Talk of the Town coming up right after this. Stick around. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. If you're looking for something fun to do in the Madison or Milwaukee areas, you're going to be really excited about my next guest. This is Justin, and he is the owner and manager of Hophead Tours. Thanks for being here today, Justin. Thanks for having me. So tell us just a little bit about for, you know, the viewers may be able to put it together with the name Hophead Tours and what is hops, you know, and that has to do with beer. What are you guys all about and what do you do? Sure. Uh, we do bus and bike tours of local breweries, wineries, and distilleries, and related attractions. Uh, so we take people out and we set up a tour where people can go out and visit multiple places, do uh -huh. tours, do tastings, and do samplings, and learn a little bit more about the brewing pot, uh, process, as well as more about beer styles, wine styles, and stuff like that. Very cool. And it sounds like, like you said before, multiple places. You don't have to pick just one. That's right. Um, so. There are some itineraries where we go to multiple breweries. Um, some itineraries like our Suds and Spirits tour, we go to two breweries and a distillery as well. Very cool. And I know you kind of mentioned this with the types of tours that you offered. Could you just expand on that a little bit more? Sure. Um, for example, we do this Saturday, we have a Brews, Booze and Bees. Uh, so we are going to Old Sugar Distillery, Boss Meadery. And a mead is a wine that's fermented from honey instead of uh, grapes. And then we go lastly to a brewery where we're going to talk about the brewing process and sample some beer. Very cool. And is that kind of the different special tours coming up? That's just one of them? That's one of our weekly tours. Okay. Um, so we have tours scheduled Thursday through Sunday in Madison and Friday and Saturdays in Milwaukee. Okay. So any special tours coming up? We do. Uh, uh, August 20th, we have the Hop Harvest Field Trip. Uh, we collaborated with Wisconsin Brewing and Gorse Valley Hops to put together a great trip going out to the hop farm and learning about the process of growing hops and processing them. And we'll do a special beer there as well that's dry hopped, which is adding hops to a beer in a firkin. Uh, we have Jim Dragger from Wis uh, Wisconsin Historical Society, who's going to be guest hosting and talking about beer history and hops history on the bus. How cool, especially yeah. for people who, you know, maybe you're interested in beer and you want to learn more about the process and what goes into it. It sounds very educational, but fun, too. Exactly. It's, it's not a drunk bus, not a party bus. Right. We're going to learn more about the brewing process, relax, have a great time with friends, and learn a little bit more about beer, spirits, and wine. I love that it's called a field trip. Yeah. I think that is so funny because it, it is educational, but you're also having fun, too. And what a fun way to have fun with different adults. Exactly. You know? Very cool. And do you guys offer private tours? We do. Uh, so we offer private tours. Um, basically, if you uh, give us a call or email us, we'll put together a custom package for your group. Uh, we work with a lot of uh, corporate events and birthday parties, bachelorette parties. Get a lot of different groups that are looking to just uh, get everybody together and have a good time and not have to worry about driving. Awesome. So much fun. Yeah. And I know you guys have been in the Madison area since 2010, yeah. correct? That's right. And it sounds like now you're also expanding into the Milwaukee area. Yeah, we just expanded. In March, we bought another bus, got it all refurbished, painted, it looks great. Uh, and beginning of June, we started offering tours in the Milwaukee area. Uh, we start and end at Lakefront Brewery. And on Fridays, we do a beer history tour. And on Saturdays, we do a Southern Spirits tour, but with Milwaukee breweries and distilleries. Awesome. So it sounds like a lot of different options, too, for people who may be interested in different things, or maybe you want to get a little bit of everything. Yeah. A little taste of everything, I yeah, should say. Yeah, definitely. You know, like I said, we, we go to, uh, some itineraries include just breweries, but we also have wineries, distilleries, and uh, the meadery as well. Awesome. And then just, again, a little bit of a summary for our viewers who are maybe just tuning in. When do you offer your tours, and how can people sign up? Oh, sure. Uh, our tours in Madison run Thursday through Sundays. And in Milwaukee right now is Friday and Saturday. And you can visit our website, www.hopheadtours.com, <laughs> and you can sign up right on our website. Perfect. And just out of curiosity, just because I'm curious, how did you get into this? How did you have the idea to kind of combine? Because what I think is so unique <coughs> about what you guys do is that it's multiple places. And that's something I've always thought about that would be fun. You know, you end up just going on one tour to one place and right. making it kind of a destination thing and stopping different places. 
Well, sure. And, and me and my business partner, we had worked at multiple breweries before. Sure. I'd worked in tourism, being a rafting guide oh, cool. and working for camps and kind of combined those two things, love of craft beer and love of tourism and showing people a good time. Mm -hmm. And also realizing that some people want to go visit multiple um, establishments, mm -hmm. but they don't want to have to drive between places. So right. that's where we come in. We can drive, talk about the beer history on the bus, and then get to a, a brewery, winery, distillery, go on their tour and do their sampling. Awesome. Such a cool idea and such something so fun to do if you're looking for something different to do on your weekends here in Madison or Milwaukee now. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being here today, Justin. Thank I appreciate you for having it. me. Talk of the Town will be back right after this. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. I'm joined now by Ismail, and he's the owner of Wisconsin Granite. Thanks for being here today. My pleasure. And also joined by Behar, and he's the manager of Wisconsin Granite. Thanks for being here today, gentlemen. Not a problem. So let's just start off with people who may not be familiar with your business. Where are you guys located, and what do you do? Uh, we are located in McFarland. Um, our address is going to appear on the screen here shortly. But so look below. <laughs> <laughs> so we're located in McFarland, and that's where we do all the manufacturing. Awesome. And, and manufacturing of what, if people couldn't pick up from the title? Um, of granite countertops. Very cool. So a bunch of different varieties. I guess maybe for people who don't know a lot about granite, is there just like one type? Are there multiple types? Um, I mean, we carry all different sorts. Uh, we have over 120 different colors in stock. We also over carry... Over 120? Mm -hmm. Yep. Wow, okay. So it's a lot. Very cool. And 120 different styles, colors. Exactly. Patterns, you name it. And then we also do carry a little bit of quartz, too, which is engineered products. Very cool. Beautiful stuff. I know I've, I've stopped into your store, and it's just gorgeous, gorgeous things if you're thinking of remodeling your kitchen or your home or I know, Ismail, even your office is beautiful, beautiful for an office space, a way to change that up too. Right. That that was a surprise to me. Yeah. I was out of country. I went to Brazil uh -huh. to um, bring some uh, colors from Brazil in here. Uh -huh. So when I came back, I see the table that they have done for me as a surprise. Was it a good surprise? It was a great surprise. <laughs> good surprise. It's beautiful. You'll have to stop by and check it out if you do stop by their store. And so what are some of the different benefits for choosing Wisconsin Granite versus other companies? I mean, I would say the biggest benefit is that um, Within the local area, we're pro probably the company that imports the most amount of products sure. um, from different countries, uh, countries like Brazil, Italy, uh, India. Um, he sacrifices a lot of times to go to, to go to these places, a lot of family uh -huh. time, and just to bring people these different colors that they're not used to seeing anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So, you know, through his sacrifice, that's really what the benefit comes to uh, the area, mm -hmm. is that nobody has these different colors. And now going off of that, I just know because I've met you a couple times now that when they say that they're going, you know, to bring back granite, they really mean it. It is really you. You are physically going on a trip to bring back granite that you hand picked and hand select. Right. I do. It's um, out of a couple of thousand colors uh -huh. that I, I pick. It's kind of fun. I would think it would be. I mean, work, you're working, but you also get to travel to these beautiful places and bring back different things, you know, that really make people happy and really enhance right. their space. Right. Another beauty, we're not limited with wholesaler companies' choices. Mm -hmm. Sure. We do our own choices. When I go visit companies, now I'm used to it. I've been there six, seven times. Mm -hmm. So I rent a car and I drive around the quarries. I, yeah. When companies see me, they're surprised, <laughs> and they say that you came here by yourself yes. in this danger road. <laughs> <laughs> so you really are getting that service, and when they say they're actually hand selecting things, you know they really mean right. it, and that's just some of the quality and service you get with Wisconsin Granite. And how long have you guys been in business at Wisconsin Granite? We opened up this place uh, end of two thousand eight. Okay. So it's been about eight years. In the McFarland area? Yes, in McFarland area. Perfect. And right off the Beltline. It really is such a short drive, too, if you are in Madison or any of the neighboring communities. You just hop on, you know, the Beltline, and it's a pretty quick drive over to McFarland, too. Right. So a quick drive for that. And do you have any plans for the future with Wisconsin Granite? Ah, that's a great question. <laughs> sure. I mean, our, our plans are uh, really to, to keep staying local, mm -hmm. uh, keep employing local 
uh, workers, you know, give the economy around us a little bit of a, a boost and uh, just help pretty much everybody achieve their goals in their kitchen, which is beautify their kitchens and uh, just pretty much keep maintaining the area with, uh, with beautiful colors. I really like the um, kind of connection to between employing people locally and bringing something that's local, a local business, local products, but also then incorporating beautiful things from around the world. And you're really bringing that global tie, you know, down to the local level and such a great service and um, business to have here in our area. So thank you both for being here today. I appreciate yeah. thank it. You thank you very much. Thank you. And again, yeah. this is Wisconsin Granite. You can find them over in McFarland. Thank you for watching Talk of the Town. We'll be here next week only on Channel 57.